Hello, everybody. This is Shalita, the nonprofit Easter O'Neill. And today I wanted to give you a little bit more insight on nonprofit acquisitions or mergers. Okay. You may be thinking, well, I only thought for profits can be acquired, and that's not the case. Nonprofits are acquired or merged with other organizations, other entities all the time. And it is also a viable exit strategy. So, before when I talked about, okay, you may not want to run your organization for 1,500 years, <laughs> there may come a time where you're thinking about doing something different. It may even be more than you just leaving the organization. You might feel like the organization overall needs some sort of supports or some other type of exit strategy and so acquisition is one of them and I personally went through an acquisition with my first nonprofit organization um, about two three years ago we did that um, after about eight years of running the organization our reasoning for exploring acquisitions and, and mergers was that we started to have financial issues. And I was at my wit's end with raising the majority of the funding. And there were so many different things changing with me as a nonprofit executive, nonprofit founder, as a human being, that I decided that I needed to look into other options and be responsible about how I decided to either exit my nonprofit or dissolve the organization overall. Because that's another thing, you don't want to get so frustrated that you just give up and you don't even care what happens. You just let everything fall to the wayside and to the point where, you know, you end up just, you just close everything down and don't nobody, you just disappear. Don't nobody <laughs> even know what happened to you. We don't want that because you put so much energy and effort into it. Okay. But there's just a couple of things that I wanted you to know quickly about nonprofit mergers and more in particular, or more specifically, my situation was again nonprofit with nonprofit. So there was a larger nonprofit that acquired my organization. So, unlike a for profit merger or acquisition, it's not like there aren't any assets to be purchased. So, I did not get a big fat check from the nonprofit that was acquiring my organization for a number of reasons. One, the organization does not belong to me as a nonprofit. It is public. It belongs to the public and it's run by the board. So there isn't any financial sort of assets to give to me as an individual. I don't own the organization. Okay. So that's not going to happen. So there's no big payday with it, but there's other advantages, right? So for instance, in my situation where I was really trying to transition out to something different, but wanted to make sure that my organization still had a fighting chance to deliver the resources and programming that I had worked so hard to put into it, you know? So for me, it was, all right, well, let me go ahead and, and look into what this with with this um, looks like, you know, and and possibly this can be something that responsibly my organization could continue, even if it becomes a program of another organization. Okay, so that's that's the good part about it, is okay. You can you can responsibly rest <laughs> and know that you have done everything that you can do in order to make sure that those things are that can happen, you know, that will happen now. I mean, after the acquisition, you don't really have much say over what happens. So that's, you know, be aware of that too. So another thing I also wanted to, some couple of, of things I want you to look out for. So if you are in the position where you're considering you're open to an acquisition, um, these are some things I would say to look out for. So in an organization that either you're, you have, if you've been invited to consider being acquired or merging, or possibly you might know of another organization who is doing really well that has a similar mission to yours, whom you know that cares about the people that you're working with or the programming, the mission that you have. It has to be some sort of synergy, number one, okay? Because if it's not, then that's a red flag. They may or may not, one, it may not work for them. You know, why would they want to acquire you if you don't fit in with what they're doing. So make sure that there's that sort of synergy. Take a look around and see, you know, look, look and see who's on their board. Um, is their board diverse in a lot of different instances? So whether that's ethnicity, whether that's socioeconomic status, especially as it pertains to your mission, right? So if you care about the whales and the animals and you've got people on the board, everybody on the board, wears furs or something, 
or couldn't care less about animals, then maybe that's not the organization that you want to go with, okay? Another thing is to make sure you look at what's their reputation as far as being acquiring. Are they a large organization that is known for acquiring other organizations? Okay, if that's the case, then what's their track record? Do they actually, what's the success rate of the programs that they acquire? Uh, do you notice that they acquire them and then shut them down or they acquire them and then they don't build the programs out and they don't hire and so there's really nothing happening? Look at that. That's another red flag. You may not care, right? Because you might be at your wits end. You might be like, bless it. I don't care, <laughs> right? Or you might be like, okay, I really want to go about this the right way and I'm hoping that it's the latter, right? You really, you really want this to be a good fit. So that's another way to, to kind of get a feel for if this is a good fit for your organization to consider with acquisition. Also, is are they upfront with information? Do they give you an opportunity to ask them, ask them these types of questions? Because again, with me, this process was new. And so I needed to ask questions, you know, what what is the, you know, do people continue to work for the program, you know, the founders of the program, do they continue to work for the program after acquisition? And, you know, I was at, I was able to ask those sorts of questions and maybe there was some more questions I should have asked <laughs> that I didn't quite know that you know, that's why I'm telling you so that you'll know okay so being able to ask those type of questions also what type of communication do you currently have with them is it you know do do you have fluid communication are they responsive to the things that you need especially if you're initially going in under a joint venture which is just pretty much to both of your entities agreeing to work together in a couple of different ways it could be to get grant funding it could be to provide programming just to kind of get to know each other and that's just a written agreement it isn't as serious nearly as serious um, um, or, you know, in legality and as um, a merger um, acquisition, okay, or, or merger agreement. But, you know, it gives you an opportunity to, to kind of work together. And if you feel like, okay, I don't feel like I'm a priority. I can't get responses from these people. I don't feel like I'm an equal partner in this. That's another red flag, okay? So we've got these red flags. These are things that you need to be looking out for, okay? Also, um, another thing that I would say is, oh, did I go through all of this? Hmm, okay. Yeah, is first and foremost, your board has to be on, on board with this. And if you're a membership organization, your members have to be okay with this. So you can't just go and look for someone to merge with without their okay, because they're going to be needing to lead this whole process. There needs to be all in for this process. And matter of fact, you also, listen, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an attorney, <laughs> so disclaimer, and I'm, this is not legal advice. You need to get an attorney. If you're thinking through these things, you need to get an attorney that specializes in mergers and acquisitions. And you can do that. Take a look in your area. I'm not, you know, depending on what state that you're in and see if they have programs. Like I know in Maryland, they have the Maryland Volunteer Lawyer Services, where um, there are attorneys who will provide pro bono services in, in cases such as this. I was blessed to have an attorney on my board was amazing who this was her specialty one of her 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 areas and so she helped us through this so you definitely do not need to go through this process or even start this process without having an attorney that knows what they're doing to help guide you right so those are just a couple of things this merging being acquired there is positive and 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 there's advantages and disadvantages with it okay the advantages is okay you can relax a little bit, okay? <laughs> and accept help because the whole purpose is for this other entity to come and they have resources, they have the structure to help you continue your work. You may be weary, war-torn, and just like, okay, I don't know, <laughs> I can't lead this no more. And this is an advantage to you because you're getting the help, right? You're getting the support. Some of that pressure is being taken and lifted off of you. That's if you decide to stay. Now, you can do that. In my situation, I did. I didn't just get acquired and then 
everybody disappeared. My, my staff was still in place and I was still in place, but our roles were different. I wasn't the executive director. I was the program director. And I had a supervisor, which was a employee of the larger organization that I then had to had to answer to. I also didn't have access to the financials or 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 um like the credit cards or anything like that. That goes to the larger organization. They had their own department that handled those things, that processed invoices, that accepted checks, things like that. Like they handled all of that. And so you have to be okay with that. It's it's bittersweet because you don't have to worry about because that's a that's a huge piece. It's almost like a fiscal agent but backwards, right? (laughs) As opposed to gearing up to start your organization and having a fiscal agent who handles those things for you, you're actually gearing down and it's the opposite way. But it's similar to that. You're getting the support. You don't have the control over the funds and things like that. So that's, it's, it's a good and it's, you know, benefits and, and, and disadvantages, advantages, you know, you gotta take the good with the bad. You, Gotta let the control freak. You gotta let the control go. All right. Accept the help. You don't have ac- ready access to the things you used to be able to have access to. You may not have the flexibility that you used to have before. Now there might be some other sets of processes and uh, procedures and policies that are in place that are different from what your organization used to do. And now you sort of have to learn what those are and adhere to those. You know, that's if you choose to stay in the mix. You can also choose to completely resign and transition out. And then understanding that that's their program now. So they're going to replace you as they see fit. And you have to be okay with that, right? So, and ultimately I did that. I stayed after the acquisition for about a year. And then I transitioned out. And then they kept the program around for another year before they closed the program, right? To like surprise to all of us. But that's another message to you to understand you have to come to a point where you're going to be okay with that. You have to be okay with whatever happens after you relinquish your control, your organization, right? It has to be, okay, it is what it is and you have to move on. Because understand this, you are a creator. You created the first one, you can create another one. But only this time, you'll go into it with the knowledge that maybe you didn't have when you went into the initial one. And that's speaking for me. When I started my first organization, I was 25 years old and I ran that organization for about eight, nine years, right? And I learned so many different things, things that have allowed me to be able to communicate with you and share things with you that might help you in your journey. I've also learned things that have helped inform and lead and guide me with launching my new, my newer nonprofit organization. So understand, you know, that you will have these feelings of, am I making the right decision? Am I a failure? What will other people think about me if I do this? And I had those very same thoughts. And I'm going to tell you that those thoughts and we make up those stories in our minds and we, we create this whole thing around fear, around what if, what if, what if. And the reality of it is, if someone is interested in your organization to acquire your organization, you've done something right. And you have established respect in the community. You have met a need in the community. You've done amazing things. Give yourself credit for that. And give yourself credit for being responsible enough to explore different options that's gonna help keep your mission going. So know that. Okay, you're going to have those little voices telling you what they're going to say. Oh, look at her. Look at him. No, they're not. (laughs) No, they're not. Because if you do it the right way, right? And that's another part of it, too. I had to communicate with my funders, with the people that, that invested in my organization over the years. It wasn't this whole secretive little thing where, oh my gosh, I'm having some financial issues. Like I'm getting tired. I got to figure something out. I can't, like it could, it couldn't be just a, oh, I'm just going to let everything fall and people wonder what's going on. You got to be responsible and you got to communicate, communicate with those people who have invested in you. So part of that whole process, courting, so to speak, process with that larger organization was I was going to my funders and also taking them with me to say, this is the organization I've chosen to keep our legacy going and you should believe in them. 
right? And this was what I I had to do. I had to let my funders know. I had to, you have to have an open communication, line of communication with your staff to let them know what to expect, what's going on, because you owe that to them, right? Communication. You'd want that for you as well. So that was part of the process. And it was a win-win, right? For me, I was tired. When you talk about the advantages and disadvantages, the advantages, I was tired. And I wanted to be responsible about how I passed the baton with my organization. The larger organization, they didn't have a footprint in the geographical area that I was in. And they cared about my mission and they wanted to expand, right? And we already had relationships, already had connections, already had things going. And that looked good to them because they didn't have to do the work of the footwork of trying to do all of those things. So it was a win-win at the time, understand? So know and be aware that it should be a win-win situation, okay? And you're not going to take no fat check home from, <laughs> from any assets being sold, okay? So just so you know about that, nonprofits can be acquired as well. I hope that was helpful for you. If you need any additional one-on-one -on -one support or conversation about this and about anything else, shalitaoneal.com, reach out to me and let's schedule a time to get together. In the meantime, be blessed and hold your head high, okay? Ain't nothing but a thing. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing on a string from Burger King. I'll see you later.